Uh, my name is Philip Scanlon. I'm in DCU, I'm a PhD student there. And I'm going to give you a definition. Learning analytics is about collecting traces that learners have leave, left behind and using those traces to improve learning. So we've talked about all the different sources of data. Everybody is looking at Moodle, Blackboard and the different MOOCs. Um, in universities, anybody, anytime a student goes into the library, checks out a book, whether they swipe in or out of the library, they're all different traces that they leave behind. But another one is the edgy room system, the Wi-Fi. Don't know if you can see that. This is a digital trace of, a, of students for a program, uh, computer applications in DCU. And this is one particular day, and what we're looking at here are the number of requests to the Wi-Fi system by uh, Wi-Fi enabled devices such as your mobile phones, etc. This is for a Monday and you can see early in the day they actually come in and they have classes from 11 to 1 and then they act their formal classes and in the afternoon then they actually have their uh, they have labs and you can see that a lot of people drop off and they go out during the day uh, as the day goes on. This is actually a semester. Again, hopefully you can see that. And this is the first semester, you can see at the start here on the left, going over. This is the first week that they're in, going Monday to Friday, and eventually you can see a pattern developing. You can see um, the October Bank holiday in the middle there. And you actually see a line going up, it's difficult to see. These are Fridays, and the Friday actually you can see, as the semesters go on, they spend more and more time on Fridays. Early in the, the, week, early in the semester, they're actually not there that often. Now this is outside school hours, or we'd say classroom hours, eight to five. Going again through the semester, you can see that as the semester goes on, they spend more and more time outside the core hours, actually in the college. The methodology that I'm actually using, because I want to look at where students are, what they're doing, and who they're with. So I break down the university into seven different categories, which is transit, the theater, and DCU, the residences, the cafes, the libraries, the school, and the, and the sport. And then I group them together into academic and social. Because research has shown that those who engage academically and social actually do better. So I want to identify the groups, who's actually with who, when they're with them, and where they're with them. And then look at the pairwise count and the location, look at the interactions to see, eventually we'll be looking at, do the peers influence each other? So the opportunities and challenges. The opportunities, we're going to try and identify students not engaging and identify supports. Can we see a pattern where students actually drop out? Can we identify those students before they actually drop out? Is there a pattern that we can look back over the years? All the data I'm looking at now is historical. We're not actually looking at live data. Identify peer groups. Is there a particular group size that actually do better academically? Maybe it's five or six individuals. So if there's six individuals, when they come together, form a group, perform very well. Should we have libraries where there's actually seating for six people? Should the canteens, all the tables in the canteens and the restaurants have seating for at least six so that those groups can form communities? And then using that information, feeding it back in and using demographics of the students is there a correlation between the student profiles, their academic achievements, and their engagement within the college? That should be me. Thank you.